Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have the case. It's still an Atwood machine, but the pulley no longer is frictionless. It now has friction. We still assume it has no mass, which means it doesn't have moment of inertia, but it does have friction, so we do have to take into account the friction force. We're still trying to find the tension on the left side and the tension on the right side, but in this case, we know that since there's friction in the pulley, that tension one cannot equal tension two. Regardless, to find tension 2 and tension 1, you can still do it the exact same way. Tension 2 is still equal to the weight of the object, M2G, minus, oh, no, not minus, plus, because we're accelerating M2 upward, plus the force required to accelerate it upward. And T1 can be found by taking the weight of the object minus the force required to accelerate it. But in this case, you'll find that T1 is not equal to T2. To find T1 and T2, it still requires us to find the acceleration. And again, to find the acceleration, we'll look at the whole system, we'll look at all the forces acting on the system. And in this case, we have M1G, which is one of the two forces, M2G, just like before, but we also have the friction force to take into account. Now, if M1G is bigger than the weight of the second block, M2G, and the friction force combined, there still will be acceleration in this direction. If M1G is not bigger than M2G and the friction force, then there will not be an acceleration, and the whole thing will just sit there and not move at all. Assuming that it is big enough and there will be acceleration, we can still use the equation that F net is equal to the total mass times acceleration, in this case, there's three forces contributing to the net force. We have the M1G trying to accelerate the system, minus the M2G trying to hold back the acceleration, and minus the friction force in the pulley. Typically, the friction force will be given to you. They'll tell you that it's one newtons or two newtons or something like that. And that will then equal the total mass M1 plus M2 to times acceleration, which means that the acceleration can be found by taking the left side, M1G minus M2G minus the friction force and dividing it by the total mass, M1 plus M2. And then you can take this acceleration and plug it into this equation and plug it into that equation to find T1 and T2. If you do that, you'll find out that T1 and T2 will not be equal to one another because of that additional friction force that's involved there. But again, that's how we do it, realizing that if there's friction force, we can assume that this is not the same. We can assume that we can use the exact same two equations to find T1 and T2. That has not changed, but the acceleration will be such that those will not be equal to one another. And that's how it's done.